I want to do something different today. I had a whole sermon typed up last night. But as I was headed to church this morning, God stirred up last week's Sunday school lesson in my spirit. And my mind couldn't go nowhere near that sermon that have been prepared. That may be for tomorrow. But I feel the spirit is leading me back to Romans 14. But I'm not going to ask anybody to stand today. As I'm led by the spirit, I just want to talk through this scripture. We're going to start in Romans 14 at verse 14. We're going to walk through Romans 15, verse 3. But I'm not going to read it all at one time. So I'm not going to ask us to stand. But today, I simply want to pour into us how believers should walk among others. All right, all right. Ushers, y'all feel free to take your seat. How believers should walk. Walk. Among others. I need to say that again. All right. From Romans 14, uh -huh. verse 14, yeah. down to Romans 15, uh -huh. verse 3. You need to talk to us about how believers should walk among others. Right. It is a misconception. To think that just because we're saved, that's the end of it. Right. Uh -huh. If we were saved just to be saved, yeah. we ought to be in heaven now. Uh -huh. I, I mean, if, if I could just bargain with God, once I'm saved, I want to go to heaven because I don't want to mess up. Uh -huh. I, the, the work is done. Yeah. But we're saved to be agents of salvation yeah. to other people. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us that we are now ambassadors right. for Christ. And That's if right. some believers can just not be selfish for a minute, uh -huh. think about somebody else this morning. Yeah. We are saved to help other people become saved. Yeah. 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 Therefore, the way that I live my life before other people matters. The world says, I can do what I want to do, mind your business. But the word of God says that I must live carefully before others. Because we've heard it so many times that our lives are the only sermon that some people read or hear. In Romans chapter number 14, beginning at verse number 14, Paul you. Uses similar language to teach the same lesson that he's teaching in 1 Corinthians chapter number 8. All right. And Paul comes from a place of saying, I know that I'm saved. Uh -huh. But not everybody saved thinks the same. Uh -huh. There are some who are strong in the faith. Yeah. And there are some who are weaker in the faith. Yeah. There are some people who have the freedom to live above the law. And then there are some who live by faith in Jesus, but at the same time, they're attached to law. Uh -huh. There are some people who still believe that you can't shave your head and you've got to let your beard grow out. Uh -huh. There are some people who still believe that you can't eat pork. Uh -huh. I'm going to eat pork. I know that's not good. I love me some ribs. <laughs> There are some people who don't believe you can eat catfish. Uh -huh. Jacob's family going to eat some catfish. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we're still to be careful on how we live. Yeah. I want to read this text from the Amplified Version this morning. I don't want to deal with this thing like Bible study. Verse 14 says, I know and am convinced as one in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean, uh -huh. which is to say ritually defiled and unholy in itself. Right. Yeah. But what's the next word? Yeah. But, but, but 
changes the direction of what was just said. Paul says, I know. That there is no food that is unclean. You remember how the Lord appeared to Peter on the rooftop and Peter yeah, fell asleep and God gave him a vision and there were animals of all types. Animals that Peter considered to be unclean right. and Jesus said, rise up and eat. That's right. That's what he said. Peter, trying to express his holiness, uh -huh. said, no Lord, uh -uh. I'm not going to eat anything that's unclean. Jesus tells Peter, don't call anything that I have sanctified unclean. As to tell Peter that now is the era where the people that you once considered unclean, I am going to sanctify through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I know that there is no truly unclean food, but Nonetheless, it is unclean to anyone who thinks it is unclean. There are some things that we do or don't do that some of us still consider to be an unclean thing. I'm not just talking about foods that you eat. Again, there are some people who believe catfish is still unclean. If I'm around somebody who believes that catfish is unclean, do you think I'm going to invite them to a fish fry? No. If I'm with a believer who believes that eating pork is something evil, do you think I'm going to make some Boston butt and some ribs and some bacon and put it on their plate and force them to eat it? Why? Because they think it is unclean. So verse 15 says, if your brother is being hurt or offended uh -huh. because of food uh -huh. that you insist on eating, uh -huh. that you insist on eating, you are no longer what? Walking in love right. towards your brother. That's right. That's right. At the end of the day, Jesus tells us that love is the fulfilling of the law. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And Jesus says that the greatest and first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But the second is just like it that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Then Jesus further simplifies it later. He says, a new commandment I write you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. So if we're acting in a behavior that causes us to seem like we're bullies yeah. or seem like we're hating on somebody yeah. or we're attacking somebody or we're putting somebody down, we're not walking in love toward them. Yeah. He said, do not let what you eat destroy and spiritually harm one for whom Christ has died. That's right, that's right, that's right. Give you a couple cross reference scriptures that are keys to walking in love toward our fellow man. Uh -huh. Romans 12 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me uh -huh. to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. You ain't to walk in love toward somebody else if you don't put yourself above them. If you don't think too highly of yourself. If, if you don't exercise your, your, your stature, your faith, or, 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 or whoever it is that you think you are, if you don't push that on somebody, you'll walk in love. In, 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 in conjunction with not thinking too highly of yourself, Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, that's humility, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. In order for me to walk in love toward you, I've got to put you above me. I've got to treat you. The golden rule is to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Right. So even if they're not doing it unto me, I'm still going to do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a popular saying. People say, I can't love you if I don't love myself. Now, emotionally, I get that. But as a child of God, we ought to be obedient to his word. And love has nothing to do with how I feel about myself. Love is what Jesus did for me. And so in obedience, I'm going to love you because he loves me. And sometimes in my loving you with the love of Christ, it blesses me. Y'all don't know some of the things I have to come and preach through. Y'all don't know some of the pain that I have to minister to people through. I have gone since I've become a pastor through two of the worst seasons of my life. And some people will never know it. Because I come to pour into somebody other than me. If I had the idea that I've got to love myself before I can love you, I wouldn't stand up here and preach. Because I got to go get myself right. Let me take a bath. Let me go and learn how to love me before I love you. But in loving you, I have learned how to accept the love of Christ. Yeah. 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 To put others ahead of ourselves. And if we're doing that, then we cannot have the mentality that I'm going to do what I want to do. Because what I want to do might hurt you. I'm not going to sit down just because I feel like you, my friend, have a drink in front of you. I don't drink anyway, but I'm not going to sit down and have a drink in front of you and you look at me like, is he really what he says he is? I don't want to offend you. It's not putting on a face. It's not faking for nobody. That's what we got to get. You, the world says just be being real is being honest. That's foolish. I can be real and be mindful of you at the same time. Doesn't mean I got to show you all my flaws. Some folks don't need to know what I do. Some folks don't need to know where my weaknesses are. Because the devil might use that person to push my buttons. I want to be on my best behavior when I'm around my brother and sister. And I want to be mindful of what may or may not offend you. Y'all all right this far? All right. You're all right. Don't let what you eat destroy and spiritually harm one for whom Christ has died. We'll go deeper into that when we get to verse number 20 and 21. But verse number 16 says, Therefore, do not let what is a good thing for you because of your freedom to choose be spoken of as evil by someone else. Yeah. As King James says, let not being your good be evil spoken of. Yeah. Some yeah. heard this example in Sunday school last week, some didn't, so I'm going to give it to you again. I was at a coffee shop that was a case that had some beautiful cupcakes and other desserts in it, and those things were decorated. I mean, I'm telling you, they, they really made me want them. Uh -huh. uh, good thing it was breakfast, because uh -huh. I ain't going to eat a cupcake for breakfast. All right. But on the cupcake was a fly. Uh -huh. I'll say it again, that just because a fly lands on your food does not make your food unclean. That's right. You've got to have a fly to be on there or multiple flies be on there for a prolonged period of time. But uh -huh. nobody wants to eat food that they see flies land on. Uh -huh. We've had dinners outside. And you know flies are outside. But you still see folks doing like this to make sure flies don't land on your potato salad. Yeah. yeah. So in the same way for a believer, it may not send you to hell some of the things that you do in front of folks, but at the same time, if they see a spiritual fly land on your life, they don't want anything to do with you. The cashier took the cupcake, she threw it away. Fly landed on another cupcake, she took it, she threw it away. That's what people will do to us believers when they see us living a certain way in front of them, they'll toss you out. I'll go get my gospel from somebody else. Or, check this out, they may look at what you're doing and they have so much confidence in you that they start doing the same thing. Uh-huh. You're right, you're right, you're right. 
Don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's right. Don't let what's okay for you because you have this freedom become a, an offense uh -huh. to somebody that doesn't see it the way you see it. Uh -huh. Verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter uh -huh. of eating uh -huh. and drinking uh -huh. what one likes. Yeah. But of righteousness uh -huh. and peace yeah. and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In other words, the kingdom of God is not a set of rules and a set of laws. Yeah. However, we who are strong uh -huh. ought to look beyond our disagreement with being legalistic and make it our goal to ensure the atmosphere and fellowship of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I can eat all the catfish I want. Uh -huh. Even though I can drink whatever I want. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm to look beyond all right. the fact that this is being law minded uh -huh. or legalistic. Yeah. If it offends someone in my company, I'm supposed to look beyond that and see the need to make sure we restore the atmosphere of righteousness right. and peace and joy. In other words, we want to make sure that we as believers can enjoy the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. We can enjoy fellowship with one another. Yeah. Yeah. I want to come into a company of believers, even though we might have some differences, I still want to be able to enjoy the Jesus in you. This past week, we had five different ministers. None of them pastor a Baptist or a missionary Baptist church. But guess what? We could all enjoy fellowship in Jesus Christ. Did nobody come in here trying to preach their doctrine? They came in here to preach holiness, which we believe. They came in here to preach Jesus, which we better believe. And we were able to have fellowship in righteousness and in joy. And in peace, we've still been talking to each other about the rewrite. Uh -huh. Had a good time. Yeah. We ought to be able to get beyond the stuff that we don't agree with. Yeah. If we can come on the foundation and we can build on Jesus Christ, then we can find some common ground. Yeah. Verse 18, for the one who serves Christ in this way. Recognizing that food choice is secondary. In other words, I'm not going to make that a primary matter. I'm not going to break up fellowship with you. I, I'm not going to stop being friends with you just because you believe I can't eat catfish. You know, that's what folks do, especially on social media. You say something they don't agree with, they unfriend you. And that's where the world is today. They take the foolishness they do on social media and they bring it into real life and they destroy relationships over foolish things. That is the devil. If we're all one body, many, many members, yeah. if we need one another, yeah. don't you know that the devil does come to break up fellowship with one another? But yet he breaks us up over foolish things about eating catfish, drinking Kool-Aid. One who serves Christ in this way, in other words, pursuing righteousness and peace and joy, fellowship in the Holy Ghost, you are acceptable to God and you are approved by men. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope I ain't putting you out of sleep. Yeah. Verse 19, so then let us pursue with enthusiasm. Uh -huh. The things which make for peace and the building up of one another, things which lead to spiritual growth. Yeah. Romans 12 and 18 says, uh -huh. if it be possible, uh -huh. as much as lieth in you, uh -huh. live peaceably uh -huh. with all men. Okay. This verse number 19 in the King James says, let us therefore follow after. Uh -huh. The things which make for peace. Yeah. I'll tell y'all what the word follow after me. It's the same word for persecution. Yeah. In other words, you are intentional uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. Vehemently, like Paul was breathing threats when he persecuted the church. It ought to be our passion to chase after peace with one another. I hate how the world has conditioned some believers to be so thin-skinned. Always looking for a reason to break it off with some other believer. Always looking for a reason to unfriend somebody. When the scripture says, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably. If the word of God says to chase after, to persecute, to make it your aim, your goal to have peace with one another. That peace is not compromising with you. But that peace is to make sure we're not at war with one another. We ought to be making peace with other denominations. Because the word of God says one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Just because you're not Baptist don't mean we ain't brothers and sisters in Christ. We ought to pursue, chase after peace with one another. He says that make for peace and the building up of one another, which is things that lead to spiritual growth. How many times do we see people whose goal it is to tear one another down? Let me tell you, when you find somebody that wants to tear somebody down, all they're trying to do is build themselves up. Therefore, they're not doing what we said first, which was esteem others greater than yourself. That's right, that's right. So if I have a mind to tear my brother or my sister down, that means I love me more than I love you. Uh-huh. Therefore, I'm not fulfilling the law. Uh-huh. Y'all all right? We all right. You all right? Yes, sir. So then, verse 20, do not for the sake of food tear down the work of God. All things are indeed ceremonially clean. But, there's another but. They are wrong for the person who eats and offends another's conscience in the process. Verse 21, it is good to do the right thing and not eat meat or drink wine. Or do anything that offends your brother and weakens him spiritually. Yeah, yeah. First Corinthians 8, 9 through 12, Paul says, But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Yeah. For if any man see that which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? So, so in other words, you cause that person who thinks it's against God's nature, against God's law, to become emboldened to do that which they thought was not lawful. All right, all right. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish yes. for whom Christ died. Uh-huh. But when you sin so against the brethren, notice he calls that a sin. And wound their weak conscience, uh-huh. ye sin against Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I stand up here in this pulpit and I give a green light to do something that other people feel is not right. Uh-huh. I told you before, on the one hand, we cause people to cast us out. Uh-huh. But on the other hand, we cause people to do the things that we condone for them to do. Uh-huh. Some people will do it. To the point where it becomes an addictive habit that they can't break. Uh-huh. If, if I tell you that it is okay to drink some liquor every now and then. Uh-huh. And somebody in the church says, okay, Pastor said it's okay, so we can go ahead and do it. But they go home and they start drinking socially. They start drinking to calm down at night so they can go to sleep. Uh-huh. But then something may happen in their life and they start to drink to cope. With some problem that they have. And it stops becoming a social thing. And then it becomes something that I depend on. And now I no longer to depend. I no longer depend on the deliverance of Christ. But I depend on the deliverance of this bottle. Then you become someone who is addicted to substances. And it tears your life down. And that person may leave the faith. All because I put in the pulpit and said it's okay. Yeah, 
We cause our brother and sister to fall. Uh -huh. That blood is on our hands. It's on our hands. What's okay for you, it's not okay for everybody else. God's not going to send you to hell for certain things that you feel in your conscience and you're convicted by the Spirit are okay for you. But if you call somebody else to fall, it's sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I'm not telling you that these things are okay. I'm not telling you it's okay to smoke or to drink or to use some type of substance. But I'm telling you that whatever it is that the Holy Spirit has given you the freedom to do, if somebody else thinks that it's wrong and you lead them astray, it's sin. Look at verse number 22. The faith which you have that gives you freedom of choice, have as your own conviction before God just keep it between yourself and God seeking his will. King James, has thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself and that thing which he allows. You got the faith to eat catfish? Fine. God ain't cooking to him you because you like to go to the top of the river. But look at verse 23. That's another fight. Uh -huh. Now he who is uncertain about eating a particular thing is condemned if he eats because he is not acting from faith. Yeah. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Whatever is done without is sinful. In other words, where faith does not apply, I live by law. Yeah. Yeah. And the letter kills. Therefore, if I'm living according to a law and I break that law, to me, it's sin. Yeah, yeah. So if I cause you to do something that you don't have the faith to believe that you can do, to you, it's sin. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. If my going to a certain place uh -huh. offends you, uh -huh. to you, it's sin. Yeah, yeah. If I sit down if I go to a bar that serves food just because I love their wings uh -huh. and I don't get any alcohol, mm -hmm. if you get offended because I went to a bar to get them lemon pepper wings, uh -huh. I'm not going. Uh -huh. Because to you it's sinful uh -huh. for me to even be seen in the bar. Now I know that's foolish to those that got faith. Yeah. I know I can go anywhere I want to eat. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I know who I am. But if it was all about me just being saved, once again, I'm fine. Yeah. But we're saved to be agents of salvation. Yeah. 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 And if I lead somebody astray because I'm using the freedom to choose to do what I want to do, then it becomes sin. Y'all yeah. yeah. all right? All right. He who is uncertain about eating a, a particular thing uh -huh. is condemned if he eats uh -huh. because he's not acting from faith. Yeah. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Yeah. Verse 1, Romans 15, so what do we do? King James says we then that are strong all to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. The Amplifier says, now we who are strong in our convictions and faith ought to, uh-oh, patiently put up with the weaknesses of those who are not strong and not just please ourselves. That's right. That's right. Put up with them. We put so much on social media these days. I mean, everybody, don't say I got to know all your business. They don't need to know where you're going. They don't need to know what you like to listen to. Y'all listen to some of the stuff I listen to, y'all probably vote me out. I ain't lying. You might not like some of the Christian hip-hop that I like. And it's got some strong theology in it. But you might think it's the devil's music. 
I'm not gonna pull up in your yard bumping Lecrae. Just because he got some holy lyrics? You think it's sinful? I'm not going to abuse my freedom to lead you astray. We got to be patient with one another. Support those who are weaker in the faith. That means we got to be mindful of how others feel about what we're doing. It's not about you. It's not about pleasing yourself. It's about leading one another to Christ. At some point, you might grow to the point where you like a little Christian hip hop. You can nod, nod your head to the beat. You can listen to what they got to say. Yeah, yeah. You, you might grow to that place yeah. where you're operating from a, a, a standpoint of faith now yeah. instead of love. Yeah. We who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Not to please ourselves. Verse 2, let each one of us make it a practice. Oh, we don't like this. To please his neighbor for good. Uh -huh. To build him up spiritually. Yeah. That's the end goal for us. Yeah. To build one another up spiritually. I don't want to live my life in a way that you can't learn from me. I want to always be in a position where you'll hear what I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be judgmental toward you. I don't want to be condemning toward you. I want to have patience with you because you may be somewhere in your life that I don't agree with. Uh -huh. But you still need this gospel that I have. Yeah. You still need to see my love. You still need to see the righteousness of God. You still need to experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. We ought not shut people out just because they're weaker in the faith than we are. Great. should be our goal. To build one another up. I can't do that if I don't have your best interest at heart. If I'm only thinking about pleasing myself and doing what I got the freedom to do, I can't build you up. I can't help you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So Paul gives us an example, and I'm closing on this. Y'all all right? Verse number three. For even Christ did not please himself. Right. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. I like the way the Amplified puts it because King James says it's written the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me, but the Amplified let you know who we're talking about. For well, even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written in scripture, the reproaches of those who reproach you, which is the Father, fell on me, uh -huh. the Son. Yes, in other words, Christ did not come to be worshipped as a king, uh -huh. to live in a beautiful palace to ride the biggest stallions. He did not come to wear a crown of gold, but he came to please us, not to make us happy, but he came to satisfy us with his sacrifice. He came to take what belonged to us, which is the wages of sin, and he put it upon himself. Christ put us above himself. For he said, greater have no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And I've got to say that he laid down his life so that his enemies could become his friends. Jesus gave up his life. He gave up everything that he deserved in his life. So you can become joint heirs with him. And you can receive the righteousness of God. You can receive the spirit of God. You can receive the salvation of God. The provision, the protection, the connection, the relationship, the heaven, the eternal life, the holiness. You can receive all the benefits that God comes to give because Jesus put you before himself. Jesus gave us the ultimate example of what it looks like to walk among others. He gave us the ultimate example of what it looks like to put others before you put yourself. He denied himself so that we could have everything that God gives us in Christ Jesus. That's how we should walk among others. Let this mind be in you. 
which was also in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Gotta love one another. Lift one another. Watch out for one another. Watch how we live in front of one another. Not causing the to suffer. Because when we do, it's saying to us, doors of the church are open. Maybe here you're not saved. You heard about this Jesus who put his life, who put your life before his life. Died on the cross that you might be saved. Yeah. I want to extend the opportunity for you to make him your Lord and Savior. See, how do I do it? You know that you're a sinner. Confess that. Repent of that. Then come to the Lord. As Paul said in Romans 10, 9 and 10, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. With the heart you believe and you're made righteous. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. Maybe here the Holy Ghost is pricked the spirit of joy with this ministry. We want you to be in the body of Christ first and foremost. But I'm going to tell you that if the Lord is leading you to this ministry, we welcome you. We need you. We have a home for you. Maybe here you just need prayer. I invite you to lift your hand this morning. We want to acknowledge the prayer. Amen. God is able. As we pray, we want to lift up Rose, Brother Addie, Brother Luke, Brother Laura, Mary, Brother Odessa, Brother Lima. Brother Roger, Brother Gilbert, we're going to lift them all up. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous God, we thank you for your word today. I pray, God, that someone was helped through your word. And Lord, we learn how to walk among others. Lord, help us to not be so selfish that we're only about what we want to do. Let us see others who are watching us. And God, if they're offended by what we do, don't let us get offended back at them. Let us repent, God. Some people are not where we are. We don't want to lead them astray, Lord. Let us have open ears, open ears that we may hear even that complaint. That we learn how to walk amongst others. God, that doesn't make us people pleasers, but we live to please you. Because the end is not just to be saved, but it's to lead others to Christ. It's to build one another up on our most holy faith. God, there may be someone that listened this morning, and they know that they're not saved. But Lord God, they believe. Yeah. And they're struggling and they want to get it right. Help them realize, Lord, they can't get themselves right. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. How can we win wrestling in flesh and blood? Only by surrendering their life to you. You have overcome all things. Even death. When you die on Calvary's cross. But you rose up one third day morning. With all power in your hand. God let them know if they surrender their life to you. You have given them victory over death. Victory over sin. Victory over hell and the grave. Father, they're those. They feel that you're leading them to this ministry. Father, I pray that you would give them confirmation. I pray that, Lord, that you would embolden them to make that step, Father. That, Lord, you may put them in the place that you have ordained for them. That this ministry can go higher and higher. Lord, there are those who have lifted their hands this morning. Those who even did not lift their hands. Those names that we have called. 
those names that we may not remember, but you know. Father, we lift up every soul before you this morning. We ask that God for deliverance, for healing, for comfort, for peace, for direction, for provision, for doors to be opened in the name of Jesus. Lord God, whatever it is that they're praying for right now, God. Lord, we lift them up before you, Lord. You said that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory which are in Christ Jesus. Lord, we ask that you just do simply what you said in your word you would, that you would supply that need in the name of Jesus. And God, we get ready to partake in this communion meal. And Lord, we ask that you search our hearts today, Lord. Father, forgive us where we need forgiveness. Grant your, your mercy and your loving kindness and your grace, Lord, that we may partake in this meal, Lord God. Not unworthy, but Lord, cleansed and consecrated, consecrated by your blood. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we pray. Amen. 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 We get prepared for our communion. So we're able to stay. Uh, so I'm not afraid God's safe traveling grace. 